There we go. From the looks of it, the um, I'm recording. By the way, that like I usually when I restream these, I record. But um, it's okay. Yeah. The the so my guy, I'm looking to get him into the acting gig, and everything was going smoothly. I was able to complete all of the tasks except for one, and I noticed that all of the Reddit posts and all the f posts on the EA forums have all said the same thing. When your character goes to do the makeup, like one of the objectives at the end is to go and go to the hairstylist and get the makeup for your role. But the options that I had were devour because I, my guy's a werewolf. Mm -hmm. So I put up a video on the channel showing what was going on. And I've been trying to circumvent that, and all it's been doing has been kind of messing with it. And now it looks like I can't go back to the training agency to pick up where I left off. It's now it's not taking me to the to the, the, the gig. Um, like I'm trying to follow like in a kind of a strict storyline and try to keep things together, but. I could just chalk it up as like the makeup artist was late that day. I'm hearing things oh. where it's like either it's the mods, which I checked and that wasn't it. Uh, B Meister joined me for a stream and his wife plays Sims and she said, "Well, you you should try updating the game," which I did. That was a pain in the ass because it's like I couldn't find the updater, and then when I did. It patched everything up to recent, so I should be clear now. Um, but that didn't fix the issue. And then I tried turning off the mods, which you saw in the video if you've seen it. it that didn't work either. The only other option I haven't tried is where if my wife isn't at work. So like I will have my guy go to work to do the acting gig quickly switch to my wife and have her do something or my other sim's wife and then go back to my guy and see if it reset there's that option or just wait and see if the makeup artist shows up I guess like the I don't know what it did like maybe the makeup artist just didn't show up and I thought it was a bug or maybe they got deleted I don't know how that works it's, That's bizarre. Yeah, it's very weird. It's all sorts of confusing. I don't really know. Um, but other than that, Sims has been pretty fun. I've been coming back to it. I yeah, I still need to figure out how to install the Anthro mod. You have to. You have to look up the YouTube video or Reddit post on how to do it. I I've kind of forgotten how it works. Or ask uh, Max and <laughs> you can tag Max and Vin and see if they know. Yes. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Ever since I posted that, ever since I posted the comment in the TPT uh, channel, I can't stop thinking of that hilarious moment in the in the in that Scooby Doo episode. <laughs> if you could find it, we could take a look at it together. I actually have a I actually have a DVD copy of the complete series, so I can so I can find the episode and I can and I can uh, stream it for you because the, the scene is just friggin' hilarious. Basically, Jaggy and Scooby to get away from the quote to get away from the quote unquote Tiki Phantom or whatever it's called, they ended up they ended up going they ended up flying through a rotating wall door the and what follows is whenever the guy presses whenever the guy in the costume presses the button the door the wall rotates and they just pull a whole bunch of like silly cartoon shenanigans like Scooby appearing in a bathtub the <laughs> the wall rotates again Jaggy is in like a barbershop quartet outfit and dancing around nice <laughs> <laughs> and eventually the guy gets so frustrated he presses the button repeatedly causing the wall to spin rapidly and then flinging both Shaggy and Scooby into a into a into a bunch of trees and then they come out as like a as like a 
as like an unbalanced kind of flailing looking monster made of made of <laughs> leaves and free matter. Oh, now I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, just the way they were moving. Just <laughs> I could not stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. But yeah, that that is one of my favorite moments in Scooby Doo ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gonna be alright? <laughs> yeah, like I said, recovering from COVID gives <clears throat> it's a bitch. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> see. It's... Okay, she is she's just making me laugh whenever she does that. <laughs> Yeah, I've been on a werewolf spree. Been giving people a lot of werewolf curses. <laughs> and on that note, I've actually started doing a. I actually started doing a role play with one of my friends. Basically, my basically my own romance story between a vampire and a werewolf. Nice. That sounds like fun, man. Yeah, it's also pretty funny too because because like uh, he has. Because I'm actually basing this off of a webcomic I saw called Fangs. And and in the webcomic, basically while the, basically while the vampire girl, she's kind of like a she's kind of like a sassy goth chick. The the werewolf, he's like this really chill he's like this really chill nature guy, but he also has but he also has very dog like urges. For example, he'll for example he'll go chasing after squirrels. He claws at the door whenever, whenever he wants to go on a walk. <laughs> at one, and heck, at one point, and heck, at one point, like uh, when when he's when he's cuddling with when he's cuddling with his girlfriend, the vampire, she she gives him a scratch behind the ears, and he actually starts thumping his leg. <laughs> Nice. Also, it's fair to note that they have very specific reading tastes. Oh. Like, like uh, they love supernatural stories. Like, like in one comic, they they're reading three different vampire stories. They find Bram Stoker's Dracula very captivating and romantic. They they read Interview with a Vampire and find it very interesting and. They find it very interesting and like uh, informative or something. Right. And then, and then take a guess as to what happens when they read Twilight. What happens? They burst out laughing and can't stop. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, because the vampires and werewolves in Twilight are basically a complete joke. They really are. That whole movie's series is a fucking joke. Yeah, really. Stephanie Meyer, she I don't know what her I don't know what her deal was when it came to writing when it came to writing those stories. There you go. All right. It's also where the best it's also where one of the best South Park jokes comes from. <laughs> Like, uh, have you ever seen that episode when Butters believed that he was a vampire? Uh, no, I don't think I have, actually. <laughs> okay. Here's the main premise. Like, the vampire fad has become really big among a whole bunch of kids at, at South Park Elementary. And it is driving the goth kids to insanity because they've basically bogarted their style... And everyone thinks that the goth kids are trying to be part of the vampire kids group. <laughs> and and things just and things just go things just go out of control from there, especially with this especially with this one kid who supposedly started the vampire the vampire fad in South Park in South Park Elementary. And and let's just and one of the best jokes is when they capture one of the characters they when they capture one of the characters that's dressing up as a vampire 
they then say they then decide to send him somewhere far away and and the and the goth girl she says if we're gonna send him somewhere it should be the most horrible most miserable place on earth <laughs> they then pause for like they then pause for like five seconds before they all before all together they say scottsdale <sighs> and there's a reason why mm -hmm. stephanie meyer lives in scottsdale and it is one of the worst snobbiest suburbs of phoenix i've ever seen let's see <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna hope to just try. I canceled my character's music gig. I don't want him to be a musician. I want him to be an actor. Fucking <laughs> fair enough. Weird choice. Of, they they wouldn't let me do the other gig. Apparently, I don't know why. Here we go. Let's see. That is pretty odd. Even, yeah, we'll just have to work for that. There you go. Come on, they love each other. Debate video game strategy. Offer Rose kiss hands. Ooh, actually, on the note of vampires, there is a movie that I think would be a pretty good one to. I think would be a pretty good one to watch. It's a bit of an artsy film though, so it's so it's got a. So it's basically a slow burn. I think it would only really be good for people who are into slow burn films, though. And what movie is this? The movie is called The House of Darkness. It's a it's a really slow burn horror movie, so things go so things don't go like fast. It it's all like character driven, like it's heavily dialogue based. But there are some, but there are some ominous moments, and furthermore, the movie has a really good job of building up a great sense of dread. Hmm. I mean, but yeah, again, it, it is, can work. But again, the movie is very, very slow. In fact, there's only one oh, kill in the and entire zook, film, and, and it's all building up to that one moment. Oh, and Bobby. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> She has to do stuff for her job. Discuss outfits or fashion. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Uh. Flirty heart cookies. There we go. Okay, my guy <laughs> needs to make something to eat. Check open auditions. Although you're in. No, it's what? hilarious. My brother actually, my brother has actually taken to studying Simlish. There we go. The 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 broken gig. Uh, let's see. Talent agency audition for the a gig. Doesn't say when the audition starts though. Your friend's trying to start Simlish. He's trying to learn it. <laughs> my, well, my brother. He's actually taken to studying Simlish. Hmm. He actually knows quite a few. He actually knows quite a few phrases in Simlish too. Nice. Yeah, my brother got way into The Sims when he actually, when my dad owned a copy of The Sims 3, my brother would play it for for really long periods of time. I don't know exactly how long per day exactly, but it was one of his favorite games. Amazing. Yeah. I had an ex-girlfriend who would always play The Sims 3 as well. Did she like it? <laughs> oh yeah, she did. She she tried to get me into it, but at the time I wasn't really that into it, especially considering like the fact that I was in high school and I was trying to study like big time for like exams and all of that. Hmm. I mean, it's a also, it's a really fun game. Like it can yeah. be. 
Yeah, I'm aware. I've I've seen many people play it. I've actually had a fascination with playing it at one point. And true enough, I do want and true enough I have been wanting to play it recently as well. <laughs> the uh Oh, uh, interesting to note. Uh, my game design teacher is actually has actually been showing us videos done by the creator of the Sims. Oh, so, Will Wright? Yeah, Will Wright. Will Wright's been posting documentaries for for like up and coming game designers about like what it's like to actually make a game and to and to basically present it to specific audiences. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. And we've been watching and we've been watching those videos lately to give us some more inspiration of like what we want to do when we design our games. That's awesome, dude. Will Wright is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having him there is like a it's fucking amazing. Like the dude's a legend in his own right. Yeah. Let's see let's, let's have some cookies. Actually, on that note too, my board game prototype has been a reasonable success. Recite love poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Caress cheek. Did I ever tell you the story about the the story for the the canon that I got going for Sims? <laughs> oh, do tell. Okay, so it started when um, when Max uh, got us the game, and so we brought his sim into the neighborhood, and. So he invited me to this place called, uh, I believe it's called Moonwood, Moonwood Mill, I think it's called. All right. And so he actually moved in. And this is basically a neighborhood consisting of two werewolf clans. There's two of them. I don't recall the name specifically. Uh, let me see if there's the... Oh, so he actually has the werewolf DLC? Yeah, the Moonwood Collective and the Wild Fangs. And if I remember right, it the Moonwood ones are the ones that they're trying to establish a good relationship with the werewolves. They're a big family. They're a collective unit. They're the good guys, you could say. The wild mm. things are more like the werewolves. The ones. Yeah, they like to be adventurous, free. They want to be true to their animalistic roots. And yeah, so, that's fair. yeah, and basically. The story that I came up with was my sim. I'm trying to find where Max's house is. Yeah, there we go. I think this is Max's house. Max moved in here. And mm -hmm. in doing so, my guy showed up to, to meet him. And so my guy shows up unexpectedly. He's just moving to, the, to this area, not thinking of it. He's heard of the werewolf things. Or the werewolf stories, and Max introduces me to there's a wolf going around called Greg, and I think he's either the only one that could actually transfer the werewolf thing to you, or it could be anyone else in the neighborhood, but he's primarily the one you have to meet. And so we went over to Greg's place. I don't recall where his house is, but it was like, some, oh, I think it was like right here in, in this abandoned shack you actually go here and encounter greg for the first time and greg will nip you and that's when you get become the werewolf and mm -hmm. so now the story that i have and it's different for everyone like everyone's doing their own little sim story but the one that i concocted is that so because i got nipped max was he didn't want me to encounter greg he's like Ari, don't don't do it don't get bit you're you stupid idiot don't be doing that stupid shit you do <laughs> and i'm like no no what, what how bad could it be and so i go and i purposely get myself bit and i become a werewolf now in doing so you know my guy slowly transforms he's getting down with the sickness and all that and i become the werewolf and the initial reaction from the clan or the moonwood collective um, and their leader is that like oh god this fucking noob he's the werewolf now he's gonna ruin it he's like the, the some fucking schnob 
fucking getting bit. He's kind of a loser. And then, but over time, my guy eventually he starts to get respect from the family and or the the, the Moonwood Collective, and he he starts mingling with them. He's he's like the family or like the the other werewolves from the Moonwood Collective, and he's trying to. He was like, come on, man, teach me the ways. Like, it's too late now. We can't undo this. You know, it's like there's no magical wizard that can reverse this spell. And it's like, you know, I don't want to go back to being a human. So, so like, all right, fine. And what hap- what leads to it is that I start leading, I start becoming friends with the Moonwood Collective's leader's wife. Mm-hmm. Not in a, not in like a grotesque like flirty way. It's more like, you know, someone to talk to on a rational level because the leader obviously doesn't trust me. So oh, I see. So obviously the leader doesn't want to deal with me. He still thinks I'm a fucking punk ass bitch or whatever. You know, it's like a, a loser. But I start training with his wife, and the other werewolves in the collective follow suit. So my guy is now training. He's listening to these guys. He's he's embracing this, but at the same time, I don't remember the specific video which it happens. But I think it what what it led to is that my guy needed to find a job. You know, it's like yeah, I moved in here, but werewolves don't pay bills, and I can't be showing up like that. But then my guy gets an idea. What if I embrace being a werewolf? Like, what if I become a, a celebrity, a, a, a painter, or you know, a writer? So I give him the painter career choice. And so so now this, the Sims world, as it were, they're, they're starting to see this painter who's submitting artwork to galleries and raising up his credibility from Woodwood Mill. And ultimately, as my celebrity status is starting to grow, people are like wondering, you know, they're, they're starting to come to my house and they want to visit me. They watch me paint. That is until, out of accident, my guy turns into a werewolf in front of a public crowd. So now you got my werewolf ability being exposed. But the, the reaction gets a little bit, the reaction's a little bit mixed. But they eventually, they're like, all right, okay, we can work with this. He's not doing harm. But then my guy embraces, he, he takes full advantage of the celebrity status. So now you got, okay, the painter has unveiled, he's revealed himself as a werewolf. And so my guy's like, hey, all right, they're starting to give me a little bit of leeway here. They give me perks. They, they back off. I'm, I'm enjoying the attention. So, so Max's sim is like, are, are you serious? You're going to exploit your werewolf ability? I'm like, you know what? Yes. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do that. You, you want the Moonwood Collective to be respected, right? Let me be the guy. I'll take care of it. So. Okay. This sounds like, a, this sounds like it should be a comic in and of itself. Yeah. I like. I can turn this around. So, like, initially I was wary. I became the werewolf. I'm like, all right, all right. Okay, here we go. So now I'm raising up my celebrity status. And as I'm doing this, you know, I'm becoming friends with the leader's wife and all that stuff. Like, no, no, no romanticism there. Just, like, being friends with her. She's, like, helping me understand without being a dick. And... As this is going on, somewhere in between, during my werewolf, like, training, or, like, early on into my werewolf stages, I had to send him to places, you know, to calm him down, and he wound up destroying places like this. This was, like, the library and gym, and this this is where the other, the, the wild, this, I think this is where the wild fangs hang out, right here, this little junkyard, and this is their little diner spot as well this is like a karaoke bar the bathroom diner and there's like an underground (laughs) bless you and there's like an underground shelter here where they they all kind of congregate so as my guys be as my guys being a celebrity bless you as my guys a celebrity (laughs) bless you 
<laughs> How many times do I have to bless you? No, just, <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. Um, you? It's all right. Allergies have just been awful today. It's all good, man. It happens. So my guy starts a celebrity initiative. He's like, you know what? I'm going to give back to this community. So as I'm raising funds, I brush it up and I repair the entire library. It's all patched up. It was like a, it was falling apart. There were missing walls. Like these two windows are a remnant of the former, the former library. I kept those as a memento, you know, just a tribute. Because they the were the only ones that weren't damaged. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was just nice. Like everything else was replaced. I replaced the doors, everything. I just, I just kept these because, like, you know, I just leave something for them to at least remember what the old one used to look. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I also fixed up the diner. Uh, this place couldn't be fixed, and I, I didn't want to mess with this. I don't think I edited that, but I put in some new chairs. I fixed the campfire. You know, I cleaned it all up. And this is the karaoke bar. It doesn't show it, but there's like a, there's a new fancy couch. There's a widescreen TV. There's a jukebox. It looks brand new. It's like completely polished up. Now, in doing nice. that, I finally talked to the leader and I finally meet up with Greg, but more on him later. After I talk to the leader and get his respect, he's like, you know what? You've done a lot for the community. I still don't get the whole celebrity thing. I really, the, the wolf pack leader is like, dude, I don't feel comfortable with the fucking Brad Pitt showing up and from just exploiting your werewolf hound ability you know he's like what else are you doing besides these charity events and appearing on you know shows and museum gala events and i'm like uh, well it uh, you see it, uh, i might have gone a little too um flirtatious <laughs> you might say I'm oh, not dear. I'm not married to her yet. I'm engaged, but she has moved in. But she is not my only lover. <laughs> I'll just put it that oh, way. Oh boy. I have two other lovers. <laughs> and both of them were fans. <laughs> so my guy is trying to keep the scandal on the down low. You know, shh. Mum's the word. So my guy is now trying to resolve this mess while his wife is doesn't suspect the thing. Meanwhile, oh so he's, he's trying to find a way to resolve this. Meanwhile, I actually, I haven't actually engaged with the other two girlfriends yet. But, but here's the thing. So ultimately, I'm gonna have to try to have the wife be introduced to them and make the finale happen. The, the big reveal, of the oopsie, you know. But while that's happening, you know, oh, did I mention I bit Santa Claus too? I infected Santa Claus. He's a werewolf as well. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I might have like in my early days as a wolf, I might have gotten a little over out of control. <laughs> A little overzealous. Yeah, I was biting everything that moved. That might explain why I have two other, two other lovely ladies in my, uh, you know, relationship status. But <laughs> now the thing is, is that the current storyline, the current, I don't know, like the the recent thing that's happened is that we went to, we had an engagement party, and so we went to an event on the rooftop, the high rise on the rooftop, and we had a karaoke bar, we were all celebrating, and we brought we brought in a few rel like a few friends in the social circle from either one of our previous stuff. Um and everything was going well until her werewolf ability kicked in and everything went insane. She couldn't handle the stress of the crowd. The large crowd made her panic. <laughs> so, oh God. so she transforms in front of everybody. 
it's a panic. You got people running around just going, oh my God, you know, and I'm trying to talk her into it, but she won't listen to reason. Her, she was in her very early werewolf state. She's still trying to figure things out. And yeah, so very much like a pup. Yeah. She was still getting the hang of it. It was like her brand. She's still brand new to the werewolf thing. And so I had her, I should say I had her. That sounds wrong, but like she, <laughs> she went around destroying everything the karaoke bar the bar the chairs at the near the bar like the bar like she was ripping it up and we had to call off the engagement and so we went at home and like i my sim i had my the story would be like my sim would talk to me like okay we need to solve this i need to try to help you master this like the way i did it because if this gets out of control i think the scan it's bad enough i got a scandal being on a love triangle but now it's gonna be like ooh, uh yeah i think i turned you into a dangerous werewolf <laughs> so yeah. did i tell you uh, how she died by the way there was also a moment where she actually died <laughs> as i give this smug <laughs> Look at the stream. Um, okay, that's meme worthy. Yeah, like, did I tell you how my wife originally died? <laughs> so what had this? This was happening in between. It didn't like particular. It wasn't like a certain kind of event. But I realized apparently over the summer, um, during the summer uh, season. Um, she was walking around in her pajamas and then it, I found it weird because her pajamas consists of like a very long shirt and slippers, but it was the summertime. Now, as she was going to make something, she actually got a heat stroke somehow. And I don't know why that happened. It was out of nowhere. She died right here. Death shows up and wanted to claim her, but I actually pleaded with Death not to take her. Oh, man. That was scary for me because I did, I wanted her to live naturally. I was like, no, 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 please. What the hell? Don't be taking my wife. No. And I succeeded, thankfully. And I've kind of, I've taken precautions to make sure that doesn't happen again. Like, but apparently, yeah, pajamas is a no-no during the summer season because that's how she died. And I was like, what? Yeah, I don't okay. get it. Yeah, I don't get it you know, you know, that also reminds me of a story that I started writing but never actually, but never actually like, got off the ground. The, the main character is basically a guy who, who died, ended up in limbo, and then was told that if he wanted to... And if he wanted to move on, he had to work for the Grim Reaper by collecting by collecting lost souls on his behalf. Nice. And what's funny is that what's funny is that basically the the joke about this is that there are like thousands of there are like thousands upon thousands of Reapers, with the Grim Reaper being like the head of this corporate mandated well, company or something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally every, and like every, every reaper is basically just a guy in a suit who, who basically looks over like these this paperwork that's basically just your life story. Then they'll then they'll give it a stamp that says either hell, heaven, or limbo. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of based that off of a joke that was in What We Do in the Shadows. <laughs> Apparently, you cannot hypnotize government workers. It's like their souls are dead or something. <laughs> I can hear her snorting as she tries to eat. It's like, oh, no. Oh, God. We're still working on the whole werewolf thing. <laughs> We'll figure it out. We'll, 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 we'll try to. Oh, yeah. No. But she did make uh, some really good, she did make some really oh, good cookies. And a zook. And a zook. Yeah. And the sink is broken. Okay. We, we can replace it. God. We got the money. Did she break it by accident? Most likely. She was washing the dishes. Man. Yeah, that's the problem with being a werewolf. You don't know your own strength. Right. 
Actually, that gets me thinking. Uh, oh, God. Potential, her, her former potential husband good, is calling her. her former. Potential good movie for Halloween night, Van Helsing. Yeah, that could work. God, I love Hugh Jackman as Van Helsing. I could see Vinny as Van Helsing. That would be amazing. <laughs> who would be Who would be Carl, the the friar who the friar who carries all of his equipment? <laughs> it would be funny if it was Patrick, like a total role reversal. Friggin' <laughs> oh god, god, I absolutely. I absolutely love Carl. He's basically Q. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. And I, and I love this little bit of dialogue from Carl right in the very beginning. Oh, any idiot, oh, any idiot can make a sword. Hey! Oh, sorry, father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the because the monk that they had walked into had just finished making a sword. Oh, Rocky's calling in the Sims, that is. Marcus flex he's like, oh, to be honest, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I don't like about this game too often is that every time somebody calls, it's usually for, like, relationship advice for some reason. It's not like, you know, hmm, I can call somebody to come over. Uh... Walk for everyone but Aaron, but I'll call. Now Let's... this actually get this actually uh, gives me a question. Mm -hmm. when, when it comes to the when it comes to the Sims, like uh, like whole things like this, uh, this is a multiplayer server, right? The one that you're the one that you're playing in. Uh, no, this is the cracked copy that I'm using. I don't think it's multiplayer. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there's a multiplayer option, and I don't think there is. Really? Because I remember, because I thought I read somewhere that it was like that there was like some kind of like there was some form of online multiplayer between uh, well, between small groups of friends or something. I, I I don't know. I could just be I could that could just be something I that could just be something I mistook for The Sims. I I don't know. I mean, you could look it up, see if the if that's the case. Like, I don't know. Well, I do have I do have the page open on my Steam, so I could so I could look it up there. Yeah. By the way, I am really glad that the Sims Four was made available free on Steam. Hmm. Hey. hey. Yo. How's it going? Yeah, I'm going pretty good. good. Yeah. I'm a little tired. Yeah, yeah, it's only single player. Yeah, I don't know where I, I don't know where I saw that though. I was talking to Sprite earlier. Oh yeah, I noticed that uh, somebody Rusty made mention of Super Sprite being in the wrestling chat for a split second. He, yeah, we were. I talked to him outside DM, and he, I said to him, why don't we, me and him do our own calls since me and him hadn't spoken for a little bit so he was gonna join the vc pro wrestling but... yeah i don't like imagine walking into that and not knowing what the hell to expect <laughs> going in hearing us going oh woo! you know it's just like yeah actually got some really interesting news though are you recording yes i am i could turn it off though if i could pause I'm, it i'm sorry that i keep that you have to keep turning it off. Alright, let me pause the game. <laughs>